My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of AF, AF, the silent enemy. Now, patients can have AF without experiencing any symptoms whatsoever. This is termed silent AF. The problem here is that patients may be experiencing a heart rhythm disturbance, which is associated with an increased risk of strokes, without knowing anything about it. It is always difficult to be accurate about the prevalence of silent AF, but it is estimated that between 10 to 40% of all AF patients are asymptomatic. Unfortunately, sometimes the first time the patient or their doctor becomes aware of this condition is after the stroke has already happened. Therefore, if you could detect the AF earlier, it would allow intervention that may prevent a potentially life-threatening stroke from happening. In addition, we know that AF begets AF, so if you could pick up short-lived episodes of silent AF, early intervention may reduce the AF from becoming more frequent, persistent, or even permanent. More importantly, detection of silent AF can help patients become more engaged in their lifestyle, uh, and modification of lifestyle may in turn make them healthier people. The first thing to think about is who are the people who are most at risk of developing silent AF? Here are some factors which confer an increased risk of AF in general, but also of silent AF. Age, especially once you get above the age of 65 years. High blood pressure. Diabetes. Elevated body mass index or obesity. Metabolic syndrome. Any form of cardiac disease, previous heart attacks, heart failure cigarette smoking. The risks are even higher in those people who have underlying chronic kidney disease and any of those risk factors that I've just mentioned. Similarly, anyone who's had a stroke in the past is at a substantially higher risk of having silent AF. Patients who've had AF in the past, but the AF has been some way taken away by an ablation or a cardioversion, or even controlled uh, using medications, are also at a higher risk of having silent AF and therefore they are at a higher risk of strokes if they have those comorbidities or are older. Uh, so silent AF is really important. The really unfortunate thing is that most of the factors that I've mentioned, such as age, diabetes, cardiac disease, um, etc., will not only increase the AF, but also greatly increase the risk of strokes. So the people in whom you're most likely to find silent AF are also the people who are most likely at risk of suffering strokes. Why is it important to pick up silent AF? It would appear that the risks of silent AF are much the same as that of visible AF. As things stand, uh, people who don't have some evidence of AF at this point in time are not prescribed anticoagulants. You have to see AF to prescribe anticoagulants. With silent AF, you don't see it, you have to look for it. So if AF is found, then the prescription of anticoagulants will reduce the risk of strokes by 60%. And this could make a substantial impact in reducing risk in the future. Now, the thing is, how do you look for something if you don't even know of its existence? If it's silent, how do you go ahead and look for it? And there are a few techniques. The first thing is routine self-monitoring of the pulse by patients who are at highest risk or in those above the age of 65. AF is characterized by an irregularly irregular pulse. If you feel your pulse or if you feel your pulse here, it will feel completely irregular and chaotic in palpitation. Whilst an irregular pulse can certainly increase suspicion of AF, an ECG is needed to confirm the diagnosis. This is because the pulse may feel irregular because of extra beats, missed beats, etc., and they don't confer the same risks of stroke as AF. So once you find an irregular pulse, you have to have an ECG to confirm the diagnosis. Nevertheless, routine self-palpation of the pulse by patients who are at a higher risk, people with kidney disease, older people, diabetes, high blood pressure, can be a very effective initial strategy. I think there was one study from Belgium where the researchers taught patients above the age of 75 years of age how to check their own pulse and found that after three years of following them up, 10 patients had diagnosed themselves with an irregular pulse and were subsequently found to have AF. This was a pickup of 4.9%. You know, so it's a well worth doing if you're in a high risk group. 
A 12 lead ECG, a confirmatory diagnosis of AF can only be made by an ECG, but an ECG is best reserved for patients who are found to have an irregular pulse. As AF can be paroxysmal, meaning that it can come and go, the chances of picking up a paroxysm of AF during a 12 lead ECG, which only goes on for a few seconds just by chance, is very slim. Uh, many patients with paroxysmal AF therefore may have a normal ECG, but may still be exposed to the higher risk of stroke. So anyone who has the risk factors should not really feel exonerated just because they have a normal 12 ECG, because the AF is silent, it can come and go, etc. It's always important to look further. There are now mobile phone apps which can detect AF by recording an ECG on the smartphone. One of these is an excellent little app called Cardia, K-A-R-D-I-A. The advantage of these is that if the patient feels an irregular pulse, they can record an ECG there and then, rather than go to a hospital and have an ECG, by which time the AF might have gone away and therefore would be missed. Okay, so apps like Cardia are understandably um, superior to having a just a 12, routine 12 lead ECG. Um, I'll enclose a link to the Cardia app on my website. Uh, but yeah, sure, if, if, uh, you know, if you feel an irregular pulse, you had this app, you could confirm there and then whether the irregular pulse is due to AF. 24-hour ECG monitoring is also another option. It's better than nothing. But again, the pickup for silent AF, especially in people in whom the AF comes and goes, is very low. The pickup can be doubled if the duration of monitoring is increased to 72 hours. In studies in patients who've already suffered a stroke but are not known to have AF, a 24-hour monitor picked up silent AF in 2.6% of the population. When the duration of the monitoring was increased to 17 two to 72 hours, silent AF was picked up in 4.3% of patients. Currently, as things stand, certainly in the NHS, patients who've had a stroke will at most undergo 24-hour monitoring, which is clearly a suboptimal duration for effective pickup. Um, but this is how the NHS is at the moment. 30-day monitoring is another way. It's a much more innovative way to look for silent AF. Uh, a 30-day monitor or a patch which the patient applies, these really should be the standard of care, but many healthcare systems still use the 24-hour halters, which to my mind are a waste of time. So a 30-day patch is a far better way to look for silent AF. The main limitation with these 30-day patches is that they're more expensive. There have been a few small studies to look for silent AF in patients who have already suffered a stroke, and they found that the detection of silent AF to be between 14 and 20% with a with a 30-day monitor. So it would change management if you found AF, you would give them an anticoagulant. Another thing is implantable loop recorders. This is the gold standard method, okay? It's a reveal device, it's a tiny device which is placed in a tiny pocket under the skin at the top of the chest. Um, it has a battery that can last up to two years and uh, is exceptionally good at detecting uh, heart rhythm abnormalities, even though you may not feel anything, right? Uh, so it's very good at picking up silent AF. And there was a really interesting study called the Crystal AF study. In this study, patients who had suffered a stroke, a cryptogenic stroke, meaning a stroke uh, which was unexplained, they were given one of these implantable loop recorders and the AF detection rate at six months was 8.9%, at one year was 12.4%, and at three years was 30%. One in three of these patients had AF. So in summary, here are the main points. Silent AF is common. Never confuse how you feel with what your future risk is. Just because it doesn't cause symptoms doesn't mean it is not important or potentially dangerous. Uh, and Finally, I would say if you fall in a high risk group, it is important to be as vigilant as possible by regularly feeling your pulse. And if you are offered monitoring, try and insist on getting as long a monitor as possible because the pickup rate is gonna be much higher. So ideally, if you can have um, a monitor which goes on for 30 days, that's gonna be far better than the 24 hour ECG, which is useless, which the doctors will give you. If you can get a reveal monitor, that's even better. So anyone who's had a stroke uh, and the stroke was unexplained, I would definitely recommend 
consider asking for a reveal device because one in three people will be found to have AF. If you are found to have AF, then your management will change. You will be switched from an antiplatelet like aspirin or clopidogrel to an anticoagulant, all right? Now I'm gonna put the full transcript on my website. Um, I would love to um, hear what you feel about this video. I'd be so grateful if you'd consider sharing it with anyone who you may, who you feel may benefit. Many thanks again for all that you do for me. Thank you so much, all the best.